Hello everyone, I'm making this video to help you out with the modeling project, uh, specifically showing you how to um, get into Google Sheets and enter some data and create some graphs and some models. So um, I'm going to use some data from um, an older version of the project. You will not be using this data, but um, just so I don't do the project for you. This data has some years and some percents. These were a percent of adult smokers who quit or something like that. And um, the first thing I want to note here is this is similar to in the project. This problem here says um, let X represent the number of years after 1965. So when they give you the years 1965, 1970, 75, and so on, um, 65 will be zero, 1970 will be five years after, 1975 will be 10 years after, and so on. So you're not going to enter the actual years. You're going to enter the number of years after. So read the directions carefully on number four and five because they tell you to do something similar. Uh, but then I just went and entered those years in one column and then entered the percents of the data that went with it in the next column. So you'll do something similar with your data on number four and five. And then what you want to do is you want to um, uh, click in here and drag to highlight all the data. And you're going to go up to insert and you're going to go to chart. And we want to change this to a scatter plot. So over here on the right, we're going to go to chart type and go down to scatter. All right, now we're just going to um, clean this graph up a, a, a few ways. Um, you can go to the chart access and titles uh, for the chart title. You know, adult smokers quit, I think was what it was. There you go. Oops. Um, if you leave, uh, lose that menu, you can just uh, click on your graph, click these three dots, go to edit chart. Um, and then uh, the axis titles as well. If you just change this chart title to uh, horizontal axis titles, um, the horizontal axis were was you know years after 1965, and then that will go down there. And then you can change it to vertical axis and give it you know the percents or whatever. So just give it a title and label the axes. That's the first thing. Um, but the the important thing here is to go to series, and we actually want to create a um, a model here. So we're going to go down and check the box that says trend line. And by default, it'll give you a nice um, linear model. So this line here obviously doesn't fit every single data point, but it's what we call a line of best fit. It's trying to approximate um, or, or reach uh, all the data values as much as it can. So um, we want the actual equation though of this line. So if you go down a little bit further below trend line where it says label and you click use equation, that gives you the linear equation. And so this is actually in the form y equals mx plus b. Think of this as y equals basically. The 0.716 is your m. This is times x, so this is just mx plus b. So basically your slope is the 0.716 and your b or your y-intercept is the 29.9. And so you'll do this, you'll create your graph, you'll, you'll create that equation. And on number four, they want a linear equation like this. So you'll get the linear equation. Um, you'll interpret it in terms of its slope and its y-intercepts, and then you'll use it to make a prediction. Now on number five, they want you to enter similar data, um, get a scatter plot, but then they want you to create an exponential equation. So everything will be the same, except when you go to trend line, uh, by default, it gives you a linear one. You wanna click this linear box and change it to exponential. And so you can't really see that it changed much here, but this is a slightly more curved line now. Um, this is the exponential model. Again, it gives you the equation. And I do wanna point out this equation isn't quite in the same form that we normally use um, for our uh, exponential equations. This is what we call a base E um, exponential equation. <clears throat> so I do want to show you real quick how to work with this on the calculator. The calculator. Um, so this is 30.5. That 30.5 is basically your initial value, right? So when they ask you to interpret this, um, you would say, well, according to my model, the initial value or the initial percent in this case was 30.5%. Uh, and again, it's not going to be the exact same as what you had in your data, like our data was 29.8, right? Uh, the line of best fit tries to approximate all your values, but it won't necessarily get every single value 100% accurately. Um, but this is, this is according to our model, this would be our initial value. Now for the E um, on your calculator, right above an LN over here, um, you'll see a little E to the X. That's what we want. So we're going to press second LN, and that's our base E exponential. And this little uh, caret button here, that means we're going to be raising it to the power of 0 0.0185. Oops, I missed the one. Huh? 0 0.0185. There we go. That 0 0.0185, by the way, is the um, growth rate. So you could say that's about 1.85% um, increase per year is what that is representing. 
Okay, and then, um, so like for the last part, you're gonna have to make a prediction. Um, and so here we might say, you know, uh, years after 1965, let's say 30 years after would be 1995, right? So that's off the graph. So the question might be, um, you know, what percent of adult smokers quit, you know, um, in 1995? So you'd say, okay, 1995 is 30 years after, so that means I have to plug in 30 for X. And so right here, you're just gonna uh, plug in a times 30. Right, so this will be your, your initial value and then e to the growth rate times the x value. So we're just basically replacing that x with 30 or whatever you're trying to plug in. And when you hit enter, it'll um, calculate all this together. Okay, so that helps you kind of interpret the exponential model, helps you use the exponential model um, on the calculator. The last thing I'll just remind you of how to do is to, um, you know, once you get these graphs, you want to paste them into like a Word document or something like that. Um, I opened a Google Docs. This is all on, on uh, free Google stuff, right? So I opened a Google Docs. And if you click on your graph, click these three little dots and go to copy chart, then you can go over here and you can right click and paste it. Um, you should paste it unlinked. So it's just the raw chart itself. And now we have our chart in our graph. And so from here, um, just to remind you as well, you can also type equations into uh, Google Docs like this. Remember, if you go up to insert and then equation, uh, you can type an equation. So one of the problems on the modeling projects um, asks you to uh, find the vertex, right? So or it says find the minimum price, which is a vertex question. So you might want to show, okay, I'm going to use the formula x equals negative b over 2a. So I went to insert equation, I typed x equals, and if you go to these little things like math operations, you can um, get a template for a fraction. So here's your negative b over 2a. It's very small, but you can, you can make it larger afterwards. Um, okay, so you can say maybe x equals minus b over 2a, and then you can put equals again, and then you can plug in whatever your b and a is. So maybe your b, um, I'll go back to the fraction template. Maybe your b was five, so you get negative five over two, and then times with parentheses, maybe your a was you know 15. There you go, right? So you can kind of just show some basic work of, you know, what formula am I using? What am I plugging into the formula? Just to justify um, the, the answers that you get. You don't have to show me every little step, right? I don't want you to spend hours like plugging in stuff here. Um, you can keep it, you know, pretty straightforward, but I would like to see the formula you're using and what you're plugging into the formula. And then you can kind of jump to uh, the answer that you get. All right, so there's other stuff here too, like different symbols, there's plus or minus, like when you use the quadratic formula, that could be useful. Um, raising things to powers, right? You have this little symbol here. Um, so hopefully this will help you kind of type in your, your math stuff. And for basic linear equations, I mean, you're welcome to just do, you know, y equals mx plus b without, excuse me, without the equation editor, right? You can just type this in. But for stuff like fractions or quadratic formula, stuff that's a little bit messier, um, it, it's nice to use the insert equation function. All right, um, hopefully this is helpful to you and helps you get uh, going on the projects. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Oh, oh one last thing. Um, once you get your project here, you might want to save it. So if you go to file, you could download it as a, a PDF would be ideal because that's what I want you to submit it as. So just go file, download PDF, and then you can get your, um, your completed project downloaded and then you can submit it through Canvas. All right, that's it. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.